Hmm. Well settled in for a rock, long entertainment days. This is going to go more than 10 hours. So it's like one of those books, if you get hooked on it, you know, teleported to another world from it. Uh, you want it never to end. <laughs> well, here's your chance for one of those pleasures. Yeah. You know, I don't like biographies too much. They seem like real slow to get going. Uh, you know, oh, I don't know. So uh, I'm going to do the first 39 years of Eddie's life while he lived in the United States uh, in an express style. You know, it might take an hour or two to get through to when he sailed to Copenhagen. Mm-hmm and discovered Morocco and India. So uh, let's get through uh, those first 39 years together <laughs> and make it fun. Okay. Uh, well, uh, what stands out in Eddie's early life is his skills in performance uh, art and his hip nature. Yeah. His earliest passion, home movie projector. Yeah, he... He really got off on organizing little cinema nights for his, <laughs> his other six brothers and sisters. Mm -hmm. Hip teenager. Mm -hmm. Eddie won a zoot suit contest at a general electric banquet in Lynn and uh, was wildly popular with the girls. So. All those stellar versions. Eddie, handsome, slender hipster. Mm hmm. Luxurious, wavy black hair, which he kept his whole life. 1940s, Eddie sports a goatee beard. Freaky at that time. Mm -hmm. It was known as Eddie the Beard, or the Beard. Mm -hmm. 21 years old, he began playing the stand-up string, uh, 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 string bass professionally bars, clubs, uh, hotels, while still living at home with his mother and six brothers and sisters. Yeah, he was a happening hip dad in the 40s. And while well, most of us in the 1960s indie hippie scene, we weren't born yet. Eddie had a normal, natural relationship with his Armenian father, Misak, uh, who <laughs> unexpectedly died when Eddie was 11. Hmm. His relationship with his mother, Milena, forever cold and contentious. Mm -hmm. Milena, old world Armenian, spoke only broken English her whole life. She didn't understand her son, Eddie. She nagged Eddie about his goatee, his girlfriends, his lack of motivation for work. Uh, when Eddie's father dead and buried and, and his mother extremely old-fashioned, unsympathetic to his true nature, uh, Eddie did not have anything to return to when he sailed to Europe at 39 years old. And once that Danish freighter uh, steamed out of New York City, uh, past the Statue of Liberty, sailing for Denmark. Eddie never returned to the United States for the remaining 46 years of his life. Yeah. Well, he lived in the States from 1924 to 1963. And, uh, he grew into an earthy, straight-talking, witty, and extremely sexy man. Yeah, because uh, of his experimental live and let live life lifestyle, Eddie was absolutely relaxed and kind-hearted around prostitutes, junkies, drunks, psychopaths. His tolerance for others, amazing. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> uh, 
This first interview with Eddie at Joe Bananas Cafe, fun, yeah. Uh, I just structure this general framework of his first 39 years, and uh, we agreed to a rendezvous tomorrow where I'm going to focus in closer on his early childhood in more detail. Ah, boom, boom. Thanks, Eddie. Um, I stroll to the Arabian Sea and uh, stroll along the beach. Uh, to North and Juna Beach. Uh, when I was last here, 36 years ago, and Juna Beach, no electricity, uh, and no no jeepable roads even down to the shore. Mm -hmm. Sleepy backwater of Goa, no police, no beach shacks. Stark contrast, 2008, 2009 winter season. I am fearful to buy hashish or marijuana because if I were busted, I risk prison. <laughs> uh, or, or, or at least like uh, uh, would be extorted by the merciless uh, Indian police to buy back my port passport and freedom for thousands of dollars. Yeah, hardcore police turning over travelers for money. You gotta watch out. As I walk along the shore, I notice no nude sunbathers anymore. What? Not even topless. Ugh. Shoreline uh, chai shacks and uh, restaurants come into focus. Uh, the beach used to be primitive and pure. Oh, yeah. The grandeur of wide open spaces, thick with magnificent coconut palms. Yeah. The shoreline these days, crowded. Endless beach cafes along the entire three-kilometer sweep of Anjuna Beach. Hmm. I know down in my legal pad, about 50 beach shacks. So. Well, the scene has become so transformed that I do not recognize anything <laughs> from my days here as a young hippie. Nothing, except for some geological rock formations to go out into the Arabian Sea, yeah. Well, Charles, let's introduce Charles. He's been my traveling partner since Athens. So this evening, uh, we explore the world traveler scene in North Anjuna. We wander through bamboo-framed stalls selling Goa gills, trance dance CDs, Indian clothes, and in the dim light, I am startled to hear uh, some Goan guys leaning on their motorcycles whisper, uh, Hashish, marijuana. Mm. Mm -mm. Well, these, we discover a beachside uh, uh, restaurant over jutting over the beach, the cliff there, and we gaze down toward Kerala to the south. Oh, how romantic. The lights, uh, ocean-going freighters twinkle <laughs> 30 kilometers to the south at the river mouth near the seaport of Vasco da Gama. Mmm, for dinner. Go in prawns. And brown 